Welcome to ETV. I'm Justin Lubis. And I'm Shelby Fuchs, and this is your weekly news update. A new club on campus is attempting to conquer Edinburgh one battle at a time with their swords and spears. Michael Tellick has the story. This is Edinburgh's local realm, Angerum, practicing in their sport of choice, Dagahir. Starting in the mid-1970s, college students who were fans of medieval history and Tolkien's Lord of the Rings series started Dagahir. The term comes from Tolkien's elven language for battle lords. Well, Dagahir is, it's a uh, medieval reenactment group. We uh, relive medieval experiences through combat, as you can see. We do a lot of arts and science stuff. Uh, we also do SCA, which is another organization that does the same thing. There are five classifications of weapons types, divided into melee and projectile weapons, which are designated by colored tape. Those colors are blue, red, green, yellow, and white. Players are never allowed to strike the head of their opponent with melee weapons, although airborne missile weapons are allowed to strike the head. Uh, dagger here is what you make it. Uh, it can be about fighting. It can be about socializing. Uh, it can be about arts and sciences. It can be about just about anything you want to make it, and that's what makes the game so interesting and why it draws such a, a wide audience. If they strike you in the arm you are holding your weapon in, you must drop your weapon and pick it up with your uninjured arm. The loss of two limbs equals death. Competitors create their own garbage and weapons which can be easily and cheaply made. Angram holds practices in the UC gym on Wednesdays and in the Dome on Thursdays. At these practices, they spar, battle in a bear pit, and have team combat. And uh, this has been a dream come true for a lot of people. It's been something a lot of people have been wanting to do for a long time. For ETV, I'm Michael Tellick. For more information on how to get in contact with the Dagger Here Club, check out their Facebook page, Fighting Highlanders Dagger Here and SGA Club. All over pop culture, a new star seems to be in the inner circle with the likes of Miley Cyrus, Kanye West, and 2 Chains. Her name is Molly, and Michael Tellick got to take a look at her meteoric rise to fame. Got your girl on Molly and we smoking loud and drinking. drinking. Got my top back so you can see what I've been thinking. thinking. And if you know. So who is Molly? Edinburgh psychology professor Dr. Peter McLaughlin has the answer. Molly is um, usually a powder or a crystal drug that is referred to as MDMA. Um, it's better known traditionally as the main active ingredient in ecstasy. MDMA is a Schedule one control substance, which means it has a high potential for abuse and has no accepted use in medical treatment. Since 2004, the Drug Abuse Warning Network found that emergency visits across the United States caused by MDMA has grown by 123%. In the past eight months, there has been seven Molly-related deaths at music festivals across the nation. This Labor Day, at a New York festival called Electric Zoo, the overdose deaths of Jeffrey Roos, 23, and Olivia Rotundo, 20, caused officials to close the festival after a third day. Russ and Rotundo were found to have collapsed with a high body temperature after taking the drug. According to the DEA, high doses of MDMA can interfere with the ability to regulate body temperature, resulting in hypothermia, leading to liver, kidney, and cardiovascular failure. Severe dehydration can result from the combination of the drug's effect and the crowded and hot conditions in which the drug is often taken. Other side effects a user of MDMA can experience are confusion, anxiety, depression, paranoia, sleep problems, and drug craving. While these are external effects of Molly, the larger problem the drug can cause may be internal and affect the brain. MDMA also affects the brain, specifically the block reuptake of neurotransmitters, particularly serotonin and dopamine. These are very important neurotransmitters that the body releases to send a chemical signal to other cells. With that said, how lethal is this drug? There's a chance that it's lethal, but uh, probably not on the level of certain other drugs, but I certainly wouldn't call it safe. For ETV, I'm Michael Tellick. Edinburgh School of Business will welcome Secretary of the Pennsylvania Department of Labor and Industry, Julie Harthway, to campus this Thursday, October 31st. Harthway, her undersecretaries, and staff will give a roundtable discussion. This event is part of the Xavier D. Williams Distinguished Speaker Series. The talk begins at 1230 in Butterfield 134.
Edinburgh University Programming Board was named Organization of the Year at the Northeast Campus Events Planning Conference of the Association for the Promotion of Campus Activities. UPB is now eligible to win the APCA National Award, which was announced in March 2004. Edinburgh is raising money for WQLN through the WQLN Collegiate Challenge. Edinburgh is competing against other universities to raise the most money. Pledges can be made in Edinburgh's name at 866-5454. The challenge continues through Friday. Find out if you're going on track to graduate. Plan your new schedule and more at the degree evaluation presentation on November 5th. Sessions take place every half hour between 11 and 2 p.m. in Crawford Room 126. For more information, email Barb Polakowski at polakowski at, at edinburgh.edu. Just a reminder that the last day to withdraw from classes is this Friday, November 1st at noon. Students can withdraw from classes on Scott's. Stay tuned because coming up we have entertainment and global news followed by weather and sports. on sex don't give up on birth control either there are more methods than you think find yours at bedsider.org welcome to entertainment and global news i'm mackenzie J. once again kim kardashian is an engaged woman kanye west finally proposed to her after more than a year of dating kanye popped the big question on monday october 21st which is also kim kardashian's birthday he proposed to her with a 15 karat lorraine schwartz diamond ring when she said yes, fireworks and Roman candles exploded into the night sky while a 50-piece orchestra played Atlanta Del Rey song. Then that will be a night the couple will never forget. The Pretty Little Liars are back. The special hour-long Halloween special premiered on Tuesday, October 22nd, and it was a hit, like every year. But this year, they put a twist on it by introducing the new ABC family show, Ravenswood. They introduced Nick Ant Nicole Gail Anderson, who is going to be on Ravenswood with Tyler Blackburn, who plays Caleb. The special was intense, suspenseful, just the way we like it. The series comes back on January 7th. If you love a burger with Heinz ketchup, you might not be visiting McDonald's anytime soon. McDonald's is phasing out Heinz ketchup from its restaurants. This is the first time in 40 years the restaurant is parting ways with the ketchup company. Heinz currently serves two McDonald's markets. Pittsburgh and Minneapolis. Heinz says it's not comment, does not comment on their customer's decision. The last time McDonald's dropped Heinz was during a 1970s tomato shortage. An auto mechanic got the terrifying surprise of a lifetime when a car was brought into his Paris shop one afternoon this past week. It contained a young girl. Police says she had probably been living in the trunk of the car for 15 to 23 months, dehydrated, feverish, and covered in her own excrement. Dehydrated and feverish, she was rushed to the hospital. Her parents are currently being held in custody for child abuse and endangering a minor. Stay tuned for weather followed by sports.
When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. You wouldn't let money just blow out of your house. So when your AC or heater is on, make sure the doors, windows, and fireplace flue are shut tight. If you're headed out, turn down the AC or lower the heat by 10 degrees. And always keep your water heater set at 120. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Get more great tips at energysaver.gov. Same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Hello, everyone. My name is O. Oh, my goodness. Okay, um, I'm Chief Weather Forecaster Dorian Churn, and as you can see, I am just a floating head. Crazy story. A witch cursed me, saying that. In order for me to get my whole body back, I can't say the word on Wednesday. Well, you know, we'll just, we'll somehow make this work. Um, on Monday, everyone, we have mostly sunny skies, highs 50, we're low 32 degrees on um, Tuesday. We have the same thing as Monday, Mo you know, mostly sunny skies with some clouds, highs 49 with the low of 36 degrees. And on Wednesday, you know what, I'm going to do this. Hump day, everybody. Sunny skies. Look at them. Sunny. Highs 55 with a low of 45 degrees. Yeah. I'm saying it regards. But on Thursday, yeah, we, we take a complete nosedive after Wednesday. Rain showers in the areas. But look at that temperature. I guess it's 60 for late October. You know, can't complain on Halloween, of course. High 60 with a low of 49 degrees. And on the last day of the school week, Sure, get my glasses right. We have rain showers in the areas, highs 53 with a low of 41 degrees. And as we get to the weekend, oh man, it's starting to get cooler and more rainier. Highs 43 with a low of 36 degrees. And on Sunday, more rain showers, man. It's just it's gloomy from Thursday on, folks. Let's just call it that. Highs 44 with a low of 34 degrees. Let's take a look at today's trivia question. An anometer is used to measure what? A, wind, B, rainfall, or C, temperature? And today's true question answer is A, wind. That's what an, an anometer is. It measures the wind speed, the little wind cups that spin around. Yep, that's an anometer. And no, no, okay, I take it back. I take it back. I didn't mean to say that. Um, <laughs> stay tuned after these commercial breaks for sports. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is trunk driving. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. 
You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. There's another commercial. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Welcome back to ETV, everyone. I hope uh, Dorian Chern, our chief weather forecaster, is okay. Today. But uh, I'm Brian Dival with your weekly sports update. The Edinburgh men's football team had a tough game this past weekend against 22nd-ranked Slippery Rock. The Rock's high-powered 6th-ranked offense outscored the Borough 44-20 to in the in in the loss, quarterback John Gervin threw for one touchdown and ran for another. Wide receiver Darren Massey caught eight passes for 108 yards and one touchdown, while Benny's, Ben Isel had a 69-yard punt return for a touchdown to round out the scoring for the Scots. On the defensive side of the ball, the Scots held the Slippery Rock offense to just under their season average in scoring, and Delano Farber had his fourth interception of the season and the Scots only of the game. The, the loss brings Edinburgh to 4-4 four and four overall and 2-3 and three in the PSAC West. The Scots travel to Erie to take on the Merseyhurst Lakers this Saturday. The women's soccer team suffered a loss earlier, earlier last week to the Cutstown Golden Bears, but bounced right back this past weekend, picking up a win against the Mansfield Mountaineers. The win comes on senior night, where the Scots' only senior, Mary Murray, was honored before the game. It was also Breast Cancer Awareness Day, so the team wore pink jerseys in support of the Susan G. Komen Foundation. The Scots got out to an early lead in the game with both Liz Debo and Jansen Hartman scoring goals in the first 10 minutes of play. Becca Costello tacked on the last goal for the Scots late in the game, giving the Scots the 3 to nothing win. Debo's goal keeps her moving up in the stats charts as she is now only the fifth player in school history to record multiple double-digit season goals in her career. She is also tied for fourth all-time with Angie D'Almada in goals scored and she has 68 career points which puts her in seventh all-time. The win improves the Fighting Scots record to 11-4-1 overall and 9-4-1 in the PSAC. The Fighting Scots host East Stroudsburg this coming Thursday at 1. The women's volleyball team traveled to Clarion this past weekend where, the where they lost a tough matchup to 3-0 three three against the Golden Eagles. The Lady Scots lost in straight sets to the Golden Eagles 19-25, 20-25, 16-25. Clarion is the second ranked team in the PSAC with a 13-1 record just behind Cal who is 15-0. Katie Felix dished out 15 assists, while Megan Branchick led the Borough attack with 7 kills. Haley Merritt also had 18 digs for the Fighting Scots, followed by Mara Maycock with 10. The loss drops the Fighting Scots record to 15-14 and 14 overall and 6-9 and in the PSAC. The Fighting Scots traveled to Mercyhurst on Friday, looking to avenge a 3-1 defeat against the Lakers earlier this season. Both the men's and women's swim teams traveled to Fredonia this past weekend, facing the Blue Devils. The men lost their matchup 94 to 139, while the women won 145 to 91. On the men's side, the Fighting Scots won six events, including the 400-yard freestyle relay, the 200-yard breaststroke, 500-yard freestyle, 200-yard freestyle, 200-yard butterfly, and 1,000-yard freestyle. On the women's side, Edinburgh broke three pool records and posted first-place finishes in six other events, totaling eight wins out of the 11 swimming events. Both the teams return to action Friday, November 1st, when they host a dual meet against Malone University at 6 p.m. And lastly, the men's and women's cross-country teams traveled to Cutstown University to compete in the PSAC Championship meet. Both, the te both teams went into the meet ranked first in the PSAC and looking for the win, but both fell just short, placing second. The women fell short to Mansfield 65 to 77, while the men fell short to Lockhaven 37 to 20, 72. This is the fourth straight year that the women finished second and the first time in two years that the men did not claim the title. Sarah Krolik led the Lady Scots on the 6K course, finishing second in a time of 22.04. Casey Jones was next across the finish line, coming in ninth with a time of 22.34. Emily Aarons was just behind her at 11th, with two, behind her in two seconds. All three earned all PSAC honors, rounding out the top five scoring positions for the Edinburgh women, were freshman Emma Sullivan placing 21st and Megan Moffitt placing 34th. On the men's side, Matt Link paced the pack of Borough runners, placing six, covering the 8K course in a time of 25.42. And next for the Scots was Tim McConnell, 
13th, Dylan Stevens 16th, Mike Thielman 17th, and Jordan Roos 20th. All top five Edinburgh men earned all PSAC honors. Both the men's and women's teams travel to Lock Haven in two weeks to run at the Atlantic Regional Meet. That's all the Borough Sports Action I have for you this week. Stay tuned next week for more. Well, that's all the news we have for you this week. Stay tuned next week for more news. And also feel free to email us at edinburghtv at gmail.com or tweet us at borough television. Thank you for watching.